Hi everyone. In this part, we are going to discuss about spoilage of meat and spoilage of fish. In other part, we have already gone through the food spoilage introduction, spoilage of vegetables and spoilage of fruits. So you can uh, have a look of uh, uh, look of it. Okay, and let's come to the spoilage of meat. So what is the food spoilage? The food that is not going to be fit for human consumption is obviously being called as spoiled food. So if it, the meat is not going to be fit for consumption, then we call it as a spoiled meat. So here is a picture of the spoiled meat. So what is a meat? The meat, the animal flesh has played a significant role in the human diet since the days of hunting and gathering, isn't it? Meat eating remains widely popular even today. So this is due to its desirable texture, flavor and also high biological value proteins. And uh, a number of species are used as a source of meat around the world. The meat animals uh, economically uh, that are being used in the uh, meat production are cattle, pigs, sheep, goats and poultry. Okay, uh, And then coming to the structure and composition of this meat, this meat, meat is going to have a high water activity and abundant nutrients which make the meat an excellent medium to support the growth. That growth may be ours or the microorganisms. So these factors are uh, enhancing, are acting as an excellent enriched media for the growth of organisms, isn't it? And edible animal flesh comprises um, principally the muscular tissues, but also includes organs such as heart, liver, and kidney. But most bi microbiological studies on meat have been conducted only with the muscular tissue. Uh, why all the things we know because it is going to have a much in nature whereas this is going to be somewhat different just let's come to the microflora that is present in the spoilage of the meat the tissues of healthy animals are generally protected against infection by a combination of two things one is the physical barriers and another one is the immune system of those animals isn't it of a healthy animal poses these two one as a physical barriers and another one is the activity of the immune system but meat uh, from a fleshly uh, slaughtered castles are relatively free from microorganisms initially it is free but in aseptical sample tissue microbial numbers are usually going to be less and the most uh, greatest opportunity for contamination from the animals themselves occur. So initially when slaughtered, it is free of microorganism. But when it is going to have the contamination, the greatest opportunity for contamination from the animals themselves occur during dressing, the stages during the head, feet, hides, excess fat, viscera and the offal are separated from bones and the muscular tissue, then there may be a chance of contamination. And the second thing is skinning. Skinning can spread the contamination from the hide to the freshly exposed surface of uh, cases through the direct contact or via the skin knife or the handling person. So these are all the things where there will be chances of contaminating the uh, meat that are being done during the process of slaughtering all the things. And then coming to the spoilage of uh, meat, the rate and nature of spoilage depends upon the numbers and types of the organism initially present and also on the conditions of storage and even on the characteristics of the meat that is the pH all the things okay so these are the certain uh, conditions where it is going to have uh, have the effect of spoilage one is the number and the types of organisms present the conditions of the storage and the third one is the uh, characteristics of the meat. So these three aspects are going to have the effect on the spoilage. Then the most indications of the spoilage are off order and slime. And this uh, slime off order is due to the growth of aerobic bacteria on the surfaces of the meat. And then second one is a fungal growth. 
and this fungal growth is favored at water activities too low for bacterial growth then bone taint so what is meant by taint means off taste and off order is being called as taint or deep spoilage and this is going to be occurring because of the anaerobic or facultative microorganisms and the last one is discoloration primarily due to alteration of myoglobin the muscle pigment the discoloration is occurring and then coming to the common types of meat spoilage we are having the two types that means the common types of spoilage of meat is going to be classified on the basis whether they occur under aerobic conditions or anaerobic condition whether they are caused by bacteria or by yeast or by mouse so that's how the meat spoilage is going to be classified into different types depending upon the conditions that is aerobic or anaerobic depending upon the type of uh, organism that is involved in the spoilage let's come to the first one the spoilage uh, under anaerobic conditions caused by bacteria here we are discussing the bacteria is going to cause uh, the effects like surface line then changes in color of uh, meat pigments then changes in fats then phosphorescence that is a glowing nature and then off order and off taste so these are all because of the bacterial cause and then come in the yeast causing is sliminess lipolysis off order off taste and discoloration like uh, this see here white cream pink or brown due to the pigments in the yeast okay and then uh, aerobic growth of molds may also cause the uh, some sort of uh, spoilage that is going to be stickiness, whiskerness, black spots, white spots, green patches, etc. can be seen with the decomposition of fats and giving rise to off order and off uh, taste. So these are all the types of spoilage that we can observe under aerobic condition caused by different organisms that is bacteria, yeast and mouse. And then coming to the second type the spoilage under anaerobic conditions. So here both facultative uh, and obligate anaerobic bacteria grow within the meat and cause spoilage. And the anaerobic spoilage of meat includes here soaring, putrefication and then the taint. Isn't it? Taint I already told you any off order of off taste is going to be called as uh, taint. And the soaring implies a sore order and also taste then putrefication we know the, is the anaerobic decomposition of protein with the production of foul smelling compounds like hydrogen sulfide mercantans indole and uh, scatol ammonia ammo, uh, amines etc okay then we call that as a putrefication so putrefication is the anaerobic decomposition of proteins with the production of some smell like a h2s uh, all the uh, indole ammonia and amines etc okay so these are all the some sort of uh, spoilage conditions where we'll come to see in the meat during aerobic and anaerobic conditions when meat is stored at low temperatures uh, some sort of cyclophilic microorganisms grow and spoil the meat that means you think that you preserve the meat but still there are certain cyclophilic uh, microorganisms which are involved in the spoilage of meat these microorganisms include uh, uh, the symptoms like uh, that is spoilage symptoms like slime sliminess discoloration and spots of growth on the surface and many uh, that can cause soaring such as uh, uh, the one the cyclophilic microorganisms are growing are pseudomonas, alkaligens, lactobacillus, leuconostoc, streptococcus and flavobacterium species. So here are the list of uh, some uh, meat types and here are the types of food spoilage and the organisms involved here. So see and after the slaughtering the fresh meat may undergo the putrefication that is all because of these microorganisms like clostridium pseudomonas proteus alkaligens and chromobacterium and it may also undergo the soaring as i told you soaring implies a sore order and also taste examples or pseudomonas lactobacillus chromobacterium involved in the soaring of this fresh meat and then cured meat that means some sort of processed meat you can find the Moldy uh, is because of uh, molds like Penicillium aspergillus rhizopus, 
and then it may become the soaring also that is because again by pseudomonas micrococcus bacillus species then greening of the meat is going to be seen by leuconosta okay and the slimy nature uh, greening and slimy nature is by the leuconosta species and then vacuum pack that is our can pack isn't it canned food uh, there you are going to see the soaring and that is again because of lactobacillus and leuconostoc then even the meat from the uh, poultry that is a chicken meat is also going to be considered and they are going to give the uh, spoilage of order and the slimy nature that is mainly because of uh, pseudomonas alcrigens and xantho so this is how the meat is going to be spoiled by different types of the microorganisms under different conditions okay so now let's move to the spoilage of fish and now this fish we already know the fish plays a significant role in human nutrition throughout the world and because of its extreme perishability it has restricted its consumption in reasonable uh, its consumption is going to be taken only in the reasonable fresh state to immediate vicinity of its catching. But however, traditional curing techniques uh, based on combination of salting, drying and uh, smoking is allowing uh, this more spread fish, uh, fish consumption, isn't it? Okay. And now structure and composition. Uh, this uh, fish has a number of distinctive features unlike meat there are no visually obvious deposits of fat in the uh, fish so about 25 percent lipid content of fish is largely interposed between the muscle fibers and what are these muscle fibers i'll tell you a good eating fish is due to its very low content of connective tissue which forms approximately three percent of dry weight and the muscle uh, is made up of relatively short segments called as myotomes. Okay, and these myotomes are being separated by sheets of uh, connective tissues known as mycomata. Mycomata. Okay, this uh, mycomata is gives uh, fl fish flesh its characteristic flaky texture. That is, uh, it is going to be a very flaky in nature. So that texture is because of this mycomata, and this gives uh, generally this fish contains about fifteen to twenty percent of protein, and it is having less than one percent of uh, carbohydrate. And in non-fatty fish, the fat levels are only zero point five, while in some fatty fishes are there, and the levels may be of about. Uh, that means the fat levels may be of about. 3 to 25 percent and these are depending upon factors such as the seasons and the maturity of the fishes and uh, we are going to consider this fish as a good food because of having high content of the protein less content of the carbohydrate and no visually obvious deposits of fat except in uh, some sort of fatty fishes and then coming to the microflora uh, if fishes are subject to contamination of microorganisms in their natural environment as well as those of acquired during catching, handling and processing. However, as this with other foods, even though a mixed flora exists, okay, certain types of microorganisms become dominant during the storage of products. So though they are going to be impacting the uh, conditions in which they live but still after the uh, pro, uh, storage also they are going to have some other flora. The flora of living fish depends upon the microbial content of the waters they live in whether they are living in the fresh water or they are living in the marine water or in the sewage water. So these all are aspects are going to considered uh, in the microflora of the fishes for example let's see the freshwater fish contains uh, some sort of uh, bacteria genera of bacteria like aeromonas lactobacillus alkaligens brevi bacterium streptococcus like this we can go on and coming to the intestine that means inside of the uh, bacteria of freshwater uh, fish of uh, the bacteria that is present in the uh, intestine of this fish may be of uh, Alkaligens, Pseudomonas, uh, Flavobacterium, Vibrio, Bacillus, uh, E. coli. Okay, so these are all going to be found in the freshwater intestine of uh, freshwater living fishes. And 
besides this as i told you after catching handling processing these microorganisms may vary okay and coming to the marine water fishes so we can find this uh, marine water fishes of uh, like pseudomonas fluorescens sarsina micrococcus and bacillus species so these are all uh, examples of the microflora that are present in the freshwater fish as well as on the uh, marine water fishes then let's come to the spoilage of this fish when it will uh, get spoiled how it is going to get spoiled everything okay now fish may be spoiled by autolysis or oxidation or by microbial activity but most common uh, Lee is going to be the microbial activity or sometimes it may be of combination of all these things that is autolysis that is self degradation oxidation or by microbial activity uh, and we are also going to have this autolysis is a basic of this uh, fish spoilage because uh, this autolysis is the main reason for the most perishable nature of this fish food and then coming to during spoilage what is happening so during the spoilage the pseudomonas and echinetobacter or acinetobacter becomes increasingly dominant with a bacteria called as flavobacteria and showing a transient increase that means they will be more in number as they are going and if you are going to preserve it by more 10 days 12 days most of the bacteria that you are going to observe is the pseudomonas which is of about 90 percent out of all these three okay and the species of pseudomonas uh, tend to change as spoilage progress thus we can consider this pseudomonas as the active spoilage microorganism in fish stored at zero degrees so that's why this this is going to be considered as a cyclophile isn't it and then uh, coming to uh, the marine fish damage or spoilage in marine fish the triethyl amine oxide tmao trimethyl amine oxide is reduced by bacterial and enzymatic action to tma what is this tma trimethyl amine oxide is going to be removed and it becomes simply a trimethyl amine and this tma is a spoilage product and the bad order of this uh, stale fish is because of this tma so the order of tma at low levels is referred to as stale fishy order stale fishy order further during spoilage volatile bases amines and then organic acids are formed by decarboxylation or by deamination of amino acids. Now, the hydrogen sulfide mercaptase and uh, disulfides added to these order. Already, we are having a TMA order. Along with that, we are going to have the hydrogen sulfide order, mercaptase, and disulfide. These orders have been uh, designated as, so if you are having these all orders, then we designate that fish uh, as a fishy, stale, musty, rancid sore uh, and it was put trade. And we can also find the discoloration of the fish may occur during the spoilage process from yellow to greenish yellow colors caused mainly by pseudomonas fluorescence and yellow micrococi. Uh, red or pink colors from growth of uh, our sarsina is and we are going to have the micrococcus or bacillus species also and these are also produce some sort of uh, red or pink colored colonies and then coming to some moles and yeast are also responsible which will give rise to a chocolate brown color uh, on the fish okay and pathogens parasites in the fish may produce discoloration or lesions so this is how you are going to have the uh, discoloration of the fish and here I told you some pseudomonas is mainly involved in the discoloration and the putrefication is mainly because of this bacteria. So this is how we finish the spoilage of uh, fish and then we have finished the spoilage of meat. In the coming part that is in the other part we will discuss about the spoilage of uh, canned foods. Okay so that's all.